Chacha. Hello and welcome. It's a tribute to excellence, the amazing story of the classic productions. It's a kiddies carnival band, but you wouldn't believe it based on the kind of success that they've enjoyed. And I do have with me uh, one of the individuals who would have made this all possible. I'm talking about Dominic Samaru. Dominic, uh, give me an idea of what that experience has been like playing mass with classic productions. It's been really magical. You know, every year with a different theme, she has brought children's storybooks to life. You know, I remember the first time I played Queen with her on the wings of life, I portrayed a stork carrying a baby to its new home mm. that parents sometimes tell children about how babies come home. And the costumes are not just normal costumes. We always try to put a creative flair, for instance, um, my designer made a contraption where the wings were able to flap and the stork bowed its head to deliver the baby to the front door. So it was magical. Well, let's talk a little bit about the, the beginnings and, and how did this all get started? Well, I, my children played with Richard Bartholomew mm -hmm. and in Richard Bartholomew's band, I was one of those people who did the prototypes. So my son, my big son, he was the king of Richard's band and we worked tirelessly in Richard's band, you know. Richard was an inspiration. Trust me, he is the person who has us here, has me here today mm -hmm. where I am as a band leader. Um, Richard was that person who motivated us, who, you know, we looked forward to carnival and we spending time at Richard's camp and stuff like that. And my big son was the king of the band and my little son was just just be growing up. He was two years old when he played mass the very first time in Richard's band, you know? And when Richard stopped, we said, wow, what are we gonna do now, you know? <laughs> and then one of the, the other people who was with Richard's band, she decided to bring a band and we continued with her. My son played the queen, the king of her band. And then another one, another person, she stopped and another person from Richard's band decided to bring a band as well. And he played the king of her band as well. And then everybody kept telling us, you know, because it was it was Yolan, Sabalo, Yolan, Wallace, and myself, three women, we always put a costume together mm. for my son, along with my cousin Morris and my big son, Kieran. And we decided, look, it's about time that we do our own band. So we discussed it with Randall Halfide, who was Kieran's designer and Keegan's designer. And he said, okay, why not? Let's let's go for it. So that's when Jared Barnes came in. And of course, Yola and Sabalo and Yola, well, Yola and Wallace, they were always there mm. and always a part of us. So we came together, six of us, and we decided, hey, this is our band. So in July of 2002, we met and we decided, yes, we're going to do a band. So Randall came up with a design and we had our first band launch in November of that year. And from there, we have just Going year. from strength to strength. <laughs> Our first year we were a small band mm -hmm. and we won everything that year. And wow, that was a proud moment for us. That winning, you know, mm -hmm. first year. And we were winning and I'm saying, oh my gosh, you know, it was overwhelming. <laughs> you know, that joy of first band and you're winning, you know. So the following year now, we had to go to medium band because by then everybody heard about this little band from Belmont that was so good. So the following year, several people came to the band and we had to move out of the small category because mm -hmm. we had now outgrown the small category and we went into medium. And then we started winning too. So we seemed well, wait. Okay, so we are forced to be reckoned with from now on, you know, and then Randall comes up with the most fabulous of designs, you know. Randy is, he's special. Mm -hmm. I think that he's one of the artists that is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the type of work that he expects from you, he pushes you, you know, that kind of way. It has always been about finishing. For Randy, it's about finishing touch. So where others will just put a costume together, no, not Randy. Randy will tell you, all right, you did a leaf? Okay, I want 200 more of those leaves. <laughs> and I want them exactly like that. 
every single detail. Mm. And when Randy tell you 200 more leaves, <laughs> trust me, you better be, understand that it's 200 more leaves he mm. wants, eh? Mm. And that is the person that we, you know, got our strength and our, you know, motivation from mm -hmm. Randall. And then, um, well, he decided to bow out. We had seven years of Randy, and then he decided to bow out and to, out of, you know, designing and going to helping others, you know. So he went across the Red Cross, the Sister Red Cross, and that kind of thing. But we kept on winning. We had a little, some, we had the changes of designers in between until we found who we were looking, you know, someone to stay with us, actually. Uh, along the way, there we had a, a designer called Robert Frederick. Mm -hmm. He was really good, but Robert passed right after Carnival, I think in 2009 or 10, yes. Mm -hmm. He passed right after Carnival. It was really, really a real shock for us and, uh, you know, a loss for classics. But the following year, we came back again from strength to strength and we were good. We won again the following year. So. It's always amazing when you see the finished product. Yes. Uh, but people don't really have a, a, a great appreciation for what goes into things. So when you get a sketch <laughs> and you're now looking at producing, reproducing what is on the, the drawing in an actual course, you quickly tell us in, in, a, in a nutshell, what is that whole process like? What I can tell you is whatever you sketch you see in Classics Productions, mm -hmm. Mascam, when you come to collect your costume, may, you can rest assured down to the very last detail, the last piet, you are going to see it on your costume. Mm -hmm. And that has been our reputation from day one. But what goes into it? Okay, so when I get the, the sketch, I am the person who will go and source all the fabric. Mm. So I will source, try to source the fabric that is as close as possible to what is expected for the, the actual costume. When I source the fabric, I will do the prototype. I normally will do a prototype or... I love quilting, so mm. you find that all our years or over the years we have always had some quilts in the costume. Mm. It is very, very time-consuming quilting, but I just love doing it. That's my forte, as I am a clothing and textiles teacher. Mm. But um, so I will always find something to quilt in in the band, if it's with one section alone. So I will do all that, all the colors, all the you know the intricate work. Mm. I will do that, and then I'll have I have my seamstress on board, and they will do the first one, and we look at it and we say, hey, yes, we're going with this. So we will talk to the designer. Do you like this? Is this what you expected? And he will say yes. Okay, do this, do that, do whatever until we get the final piece. Mm -hmm. And now you're doing that for each section. Each section, mm -hmm. and we normally have eight sections in the band. We have what we call a special section because we have a teenage section where we have teenage girls. Mm -hmm. If you look back here, you'll see this back piece that mm -hmm. you're seeing there. That was the last year's band, and our teenage girls wore that. You know, we, they, they feel as though they are individuals themselves because their costumes are always big, yeah. you know, and they they act on the road as if they are all queens, <laughs> you know, so they really enjoy themselves. And our uh, um, Classics Productions actually is about fun, family, and friendship. Mm -hmm. That's our motto. The first thing, we are a family band. So we look out for each other. All the parents look out for each other's children. Mm -hmm. You know, we make sure if there's a child there, the parent can afford to leave it. The parent has to work. The parent can leave her child with us, and we take care of that child. We make sure that those children have water, they have liquids throughout the day, on any given day. We make sure that they're fed, you know, so it's an all-inclusive band. Mm. And we also do a lot of charity in our band. Mm. Over the years, we have partnered with the Cascade School, mm -hmm. and we give all the children from the school costumes every year. Yeah, we do that, and we give to other homes, we give to other schools in Belmont, as we are Belmont Band. Mm -hmm. And uh, my pet school is actually Belmont Government Primary, because mm -hmm. that's where I went to school. So I ensure that the children who are less fortunate from that school, they also we also give costumes. So we give away almost, uh, more than half of the band we give away each year. It's it's a labor of love for us. Mm. So our classics is not about money making, because we don't make money. Right. And that, that's the other thing. Like today, you you I see all these backpacks and, and yes, everything. We but we don't have a carnival this year. But yet, yes, that's still your yes, finding time. Yes, because we want to keep our children 
with us. Mm. We want to show them how much we love and care for them and they remain our family. So having said that, we came up with the idea of a care package for the children. So today what we did is we gave out care packages. In the care packages, it included a mask, a face mask, mm -hmm. hand sanitizer, all branded with classics, and a nice little pouch for them to take, you know, along with them wherever they go. Mm -hmm. We also did like, some little school supplies, erasers, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. um, sharpeners, and that time. And all the little ones got a toy in their bag. Mm -hmm. And they all got, of course, snacks, mm -hmm. goodies, several goodies. <laughs> so they went away very happy. Yes, yeah. yeah, so. That was what we thought that we could do, give mm -hmm. back, you know, mm -hmm. because we win every year and we can't do it without the children. And it was all made possible with the kind support of the National Lotteries Control Board. this, a small band on debut with a portrayal called I Once Wrote a Story, dominated the small band category in 2003 and started a most amazing string of success that any band leader, large or small, kiddies or adults, would be extremely proud of. And so started a winning streak that continues even today. In 2004, the band stepped up into the medium category and found its winning ways continued there as well, starting with the Treasure Trail, then Stepping Stone and Give Jack His Jacket in subsequent years. Worthy of special mention here is the dominance of the band both at the Savannah and Downtown, the two main judging points. Wrap your head around this. Classics Productions did the double for nine consecutive years while in the medium category between 2008 and 2016. The streak only ended once they decided to make the step up into the large band category. But through the form, 
Lajo was better as they just continued their dominant form as a large band as well. And from 2017 to the present, the band hasn't stopped winning and doing the double and at times triple when you throw in the Red Cross title as well. Not to be lost in all of this success is the brilliance and creativity of the designers, Randy Harfide, Gregory Lorignard, Sheldon Clemendo, Dominic Fields, Robert Frederick, Gerard Barnes, and now Mike Johnson, who has had five straight years of constant success, but then that's the classics productions we. Their kings and queens have also been a sight for sore eyes on the parade routes as well as on stage, adding value to an already stunning resume that is the envy of many inside and out of the mass fraternity. The family atmosphere and the camaraderies among members, parents and sponsors like Clico initially and now the National Lottery's control board is possibly the main ingredients in this success brew and may long continue to ferment success on top of success and provide what has become a sort of finishing school for so many youngsters to grow and evolve into outstanding and confident young men and women in our society. Samuel Jackson is Abuja uh, Abu Araya, headhunter. The ceremonial witch doctor. The ritual spellbinder. Warrior. Reinforcer of balance. Giving renewed life to mortals from the realm of the afterlife. Collector of soul matter. The life force. Welcome to Chief Abuja Abu Araya, headhunter. This costume was designed and made by Mike Johnson. Take your time. Behind the bush with a big, big smile. Hello. You want to play? Hi. So you want to look at it and the more I analyze They just try to entice with a playful life So make sure they crystal, make sure they inside Cause them do not buy the knife But what do we? Them don't really know what they do we? Always more harass people children Foot flip back with a cap on me This is the final for the jury I feel good and, and successful that I can be king of the juniors and soon to be the kings of the seniors as well. Mm -hmm. So, I love the experience that I'm getting from since small mm -hmm. to now. And I would like to still bring back the memories to maybe my younger children or carry it about and teach other, bring it about to the country and you know, teach other students like what is carnival, how you experience and you know, just enjoy yourself with carnival like how I did. It reminds me of mine from <laughs> since small <laughs> to now. Because at uh, these big trophies and, you know, I would love to have big trophies like these mm -hmm. in seniors. So, yeah. Now you talk about seniors. So I get the impression that you're not done playing much. You, you're thinking long term now. And, and, and going on. how do you think? playing with classic uh, productions would have helped you prepare you for that next step? Well, they prepare me good enough because mm -hmm. from small, I was playing with these sections at first and I didn't. You know, I wasn't experienced like how everybody was enjoying. Mm -hmm. But as I got into it more to be in individuals and watching other people play and thinking of my own ideas and movements and steps to do, to portray and you know, I got the kind of feedback that I have confidence in myself now that I could show what I have, show the talent that I have to bring it out. You get like a sense of power, like if you can just do anything at that given moment, mm -hmm. like anything's possible because it's you and yourself out there and you're just performing for a audience who would be just mesmerized by your ability to show your portrayal in your best in the best way that you can.
really like the bed costumes mm -hmm. because you get more detail and it just makes it look more realistic mm -hmm. and all of the colors and how those colors can express express your portrayal it's really it's really cool <laughs> it's cool but you know when they play big costume it costs big money so obviously you're looking at mommy and daddy and thinking i wonder if they could afford this i mean if you had to say a word to your parents right now what, what would you say to them they, they should start saving up their money because <laughs> <laughs> you're going bigger <laughs> yes with the confidence i've gathered from my years in playing carnival i've been able to be more outgoing and I've started to get myself involved in more clubs and areas in my school because I wasn't really the outgoing type. Mm -hmm. I was more kept to myself and quiet and I used to stay in like specific areas but now I'm making friends and going out and just doing new things. Mm -hmm. They don't <laughs> treat me differently. <laughs> they don't? No, just stay, just being normal because uh. it's, it's, it's up for a time, but other than that, we just, we just be normal to each other. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. And uh, do you encourage your friends to, to come and play with you? I have tried many <laughs> times. <laughs> and they won't take the bait? No. Why? Because they don't, they, I don't think they like that. This, they don't, I don't think they like the fact that they're um, going on the road and just, just, um, just going out in general. Mm. Because they don't like how loud the music is or um, the, all the different people who be watching them. Mm. But I've been trying to tell them that it's a good experience to have to at least try it at least once because they wouldn't regret it. It's a really amazing experience. As a young child, I was very shy and introverted. <clears throat> and I remember my mom took me to spectate Kitty's Carnival at two years old for the first time. And she was shocked when I said, wow, mom, I want to do that. I want to be on stage with those kids. And I felt like being on stage, it really allowed me to tap into that inner happiness and joy mm -hmm. and learn to express myself because I was so very reserved and shy. Mm -hmm. It has greatly boosted my confidence and um, it has taught me a lot about our local culture because from the age of two, growing up in um, a family band, mm -hmm. it's really um, given me insight to the grassroots of our culture, how designers come and sketch the designs, w the process of choosing the fabric, the process of building a costume from the wire bending to the welding. It's a really intricate process. And as a child growing up, it really provided me with a rich landscape of our culture. Every year just got better for me because every year my costumes got more intricate and bigger too. And um, the last time I played Queen, I was 18 years old. And I was sad because I had aged out of the system. You know, you can no longer play Queen of the Band, Children's Carnival. And I'm now in my 30s and I look back and I always say, you know, Children's Carnival is the real deal. Mm -hmm. And portraying a Queen of Carnival Band is really special, especially having the opportunity to go on stage at night for the Children's King and Queen mm -hmm. of Champs, Champs mm -hmm. in Concert and the um, the judging before, mm -hmm. it's spectacular. When you get on that stage and the lights hit you and you get to portray your costume to the song of your choice, it's really special. My mom plays all the roles, <laughs> actually. She helps out with everything. Mm -hmm. So all the costumes I had from since small to now, we have all, mm. all, like every, all trophies, you have trophies. We just have everything to bring back memory. Mm -hmm. So when you when you go in that room and look at all those costumes that you wore way back when, I mean, what, what comes to mind? How, how do you feel and, and what kind of accomplishment you feel? Well, first, we from the small, I was like, I was so tiny. <laughs> I was like, I was like, <laughs> so tiny and small. And when I look back at pictures, I was like, this is me. <laughs> And then when I look in now, I say, yes, that was me playing. 
They've been like my support system. They've been with me throughout the entire time that I've been playing mass, and they've been giving me the confidence that I need, like before going on stage and coming off stage and just giving me words of encouragement. And it just made me feel better about myself when it comes to playing mass. Mm -hmm. Introduce it to your child, even if they've never asked about it or expressed a desire, you should take it upon yourself to, to take them to spectate and to enroll in a band and see if they enjoy it. Because like me, I was really shy and introverted and my mother would never have thought that I would want to take part. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's a defining fact of my childhood. It brought me so much joy and happiness. You know, I remember coming to this store, the Samaru store in the evening when um, we were closing and I would help my parents pack up by picking up the little gems on the floor while they were sweeping and cleaning up and saving those gems and asking them to stick it onto my costume because those were the gems that I handpicked. And in time to come, I started picking up all the tassels and the ends of braids and we started decorating our boots. And I remember that my sister and I, younger sister, we were the first kids that actually started decorating our boots for Kitty's Carnival. For me, it was being able to enjoy myself without being chastised or belittled as a child in a character where everybody, that everybody enjoyed, right? So it was more about freedom and be able to dance to the music without saying, without anybody adult saying, hey, don't do that. So it was more the freedom and passion, passion of of um, portraying a character that is not me. In terms of character and who the children portray, the difference between then and now is that they tell that they tell a story, right? So with every section, you get a story it is to be told and. You explain and define the character to the child. So when it's time to like cross the stage, which is the most important part, because the journey to the stage is just walking and fun, um, you know, showing it off to people. You, they get, I think, it's momentum, mm -hmm. per se. So I guess. But everything is on the stage. Yeah. I mean, that is is that what you conceptualize? I think when you when you think of playing mass, play being on stage. I think that's the that's the key point mm -hmm. because the journey is just a display and and the um, persons who are looking on uh, they just fantasize, but the real adrenaline and the real push and the real th is when you're on the stage. That's mm -hmm. I think that's the moment that everybody anticipates the most. I think all children are fantasized of playing by playing mass. I don't think a parent would bring a child that is not fantasized by playing mass. Mm -hmm. So all the children that come, they have a, they have this enthusiasm to play and this eagerness to just get on the road and enjoy it. So it's more about the discipline on the road. And um, that's it, they, they come ready, they come prepared, they want to jump up, like why, why are we taking so long to jump up? <laughs> We're keeping us back. <laughs> so we don't really have to do much in terms of getting the children ready, but the discipline, well, you know, with judge, at judging points and stuff, you have to have a certain right. discipline. And that is, I think that is one of our challenges because they don't want to hear, they have to go in a snake line. They don't want to, they just want to be free. <laughs> Especially when we prize in them, okay listen we come into the stage only free up but then we telling them going along so that's the only thing but other than that they are ready okay, we're chatting here now with alita lyder batiste who again is another a parent who has had this amazing experience growing and developing and watching her children mature in the band classic production so alita thanks so much for uh, spending a little time with us and as a parent what is this whole, when you look around and see all of this stuff here, and, and because you would know from your own experience, what, what is this all about and, and, and what feeling comes to mind? Um, it's a feeling of euphoria mm -hmm. um, because I have three girls in the band um, and for them, carnival is life, <laughs> you know. Um, they live for the carnival. They, they, I mean, it's an enjoyment for them. The, the, the process, the, and then the actual days on the road, the competitions. So it's, it's a feeling of euphoria um, for them. Do you bring them into the mass camp so that they could see 
They yeah, do. yeah. We bring them into the mass camp. Um, they were there from um, Myla's daughter. She's she's been playing since she's about four, five years, mm -hmm. and um, they have grown into the mass camp. So they come um, in preparation days mm -hmm. before, um, so they know what is going on. Mm -hmm. They see what is going on. They are a part of it. They learn about sticking and breeding and little finer things in the in, in the band. Um, so yeah, they are very much a part of it. It's good for me um, because I have learned little techniques mm -hmm. um, because I'm not a mass player, it's not my profession, but I've learned um, along the years, you know, different techniques and, and different, um, you know, sh I shouldn't say shortcuts, but you know, little things that could be done or materials could be mm -hmm. used or you know, things that could be done to enhance and their costumes and so. The band for one, it's an all-inclusive man. Mm -hmm. So Carnival, Saturday and Sunday, kids are, are always given refreshments right through on the journey on the road. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's not, they're not tired. They, at, before they start on Carnival, Saturday, breakfast is provided. They have refreshments right through the band and on after um, portraying the, the costumes on Carnival Saturday. There's lunch provided for them. Um, so they're always hydrated, they're always given snacks. They, they're taken care of, mm -hmm. properly well taken care of on the road. Let me, let me tell you, let me ask you another question here. Mm -hmm. When you invest all your energies and, and your time and your money and what have you in a costume and Carnival and Ash Wednesday comes, yeah, it, not only are you tired, now, what do you do with the costume? Um, I know some people have a real tabanka in destroying <laughs> a costume. No. They, they can't see themselves doing it. No, because of, of the kind of money and time and energy that you put out, it's really, really hard for you to break down and destroy a costume. Mm. So some of our pieces are at home on display. We have trophies as well, as a lot of trophies as well on display. So breaking it down, no. It's just, <laughs> it's too heartbreaking. The art of wire bending is seen as a dying exercise that needs urgent attention. Gone are the days of the likes of Osito Velasquez or Geraldo Vera, among others, who used their hands, eyes, and imagination to conceive and then produce mass, bringing their ideas to life in a very real yet seamless fashion. At Classics Productions, they are doing their part to keep the tradition of making mass alive. And their masqueraders, ironically, are getting the information firsthand as they participate in the production of their own costumes. Who is to say the next renowned designer, Artisan, isn't already being groomed at the Belmont base of classic productions? Only time will tell. We go days without sleeping, days, especially when it coming down to the last point. We want to make sure everything is prepared, that the children's costumes are not, there isn't any faults. And then when we cross the stage and we go and we sit down and we're like, hey, what are they? And then you could turn around days after and you witness all of this. It's like, yes! This is what this is what we live for. For us that works in the mass camp, yes, we want to see the children enjoy themselves, but we also it brings a comfort. Well, to me, I could speak on my behalf that there's a token of appreciation in the eyes of the the people who are judging us. And when you look back at all those experiences, all the winnings, all the the friendships, the relationships that you've developed over the years, um, what does that say to you personally, as someone who's been at the very start of it all. I feel accomplished mm -hmm. because I meet children all the time on the street and they say, Miss Auntie Van, how are you? I say, Auntie, look at that. <laughs> Can't remember me, I used to play mass in your band. You know, so they haven't forgotten me. You know, several of them, for instance, Shadi. Shadi was one of our very first and Shadi has come back and Shadi assists now. She actually does production, help with the production, you know, and manage, um, does the registration and that type of thing. And two, one of my children from school, Ayinka Carrington, she's now the secretary of the band, you know, so 
we have all come together now like a very big family and you know we haven't forgotten those who have gone mm. have played mass before and have gone and they all come back at some point in time and bring their children mm. to play you know because that family you know relationship that we have developed over the years it has never really wavered being very passionate about carnival and in particular children's carnival continues to be the foundation for classic productions existence and as we say this is really truly a labor of love though the ban camp is based in norfolk street belmont traditionally every year my wife abigail and i would actually turn our garage into a mass camp for about six weeks to produce our son's costumes either as individuals or kings as well as other individuals and for the band and a few band elements needless to say our, our team is made up of family and friends we have seen our three sons two of which are adults now totally enjoying themselves creating lasting memories playing junior carnival and of course, the icing on the cake really has been the excellent achievements at the various competitions. From on set, my wife and I agreed that we'd never force our children to play mass, but we were very happy when they naturally enjoyed it. Even at the tiring times when it may have been only for the possible prizes. But what a joy it was to see them just having a great time. As parents, we have seen how our children's involvement in Carnival has contributed to their holistic development and would encourage all parents to expose their children to any form of culture and the performing arts. I was junior queen for Class X for, from 2011 to 2015 and every year playing all those different stages, making it to finals most years and just performing under those lights and for those judges and just crossing the stage, the feeling never changes, it never goes away. It's just as exciting, just as exhilarating, just as enjoyable every single year. It's amazing. And I wouldn't trade those memories for anything in the world. And the fun didn't end like just on stage. Afterwards, after all the competitions, seeing your pictures in newspapers, seeing your face on magazines when you're going in the airport and you're on planes and you're seeing your face on like magazines, it was cool. <laughs> I don't know what other word to describe it as. It was just an amazing feeling. And whilst I did have some disappointments along the way, like everyone would, the high points and the the winds made all of those bad ones go away and also i was young so i kind of just brushed those off as far as my beginnings in carnival my very first portrayal was as a two-year-old in richard bartholomew's band um playing at the time a dwen taking a bush bar as i reflect on those many portrayals uh, i am just so appreciative for the the confidence and courage that uh, it helped to give the young man that I was at the time. And I remember back then going to see the senior kings and queens, the likes of uh, Curtis Eustace and, and Farid Cavalio, whose costumes were so wonderfully engineered, both in the fluidity and movement, so that he never needed uh, wheels and seeing the confidence that, that they embodied. And, and in all honesty, my efforts were just um, an attempt to replicate what I saw them do. Uh, and over time it stuck and, and the, the, the confidence that, that they showed was what I tried to embody and eventually um, that became part of who I, who I, who I am. Um, and you know, a reflection on the, the cultural component. Um, I very much see these um, costumes and portrayals and these masqueraders as sort of like physical griots who are the storytellers um, by way of, 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 their, of their costumes, kind of enabling society year after year to keep in touch with, you know, with, 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 with our roots in Carnival um, and also to share each year the stories of our culture. Um, and for me, that is what uh, Carnival represents. That is what uh, Classics Productions tries to do every year. Uh, and that for me is just um, a tremendous joy. 
What is the biggest satisfaction for you? Seeing the children on the road having fun. Mm -hmm. It's not even about the trophies, you won't believe that. Mm -hmm. It's about how much the children enjoy themselves. That gives me the most pleasure. Mm -hmm. Yes, when I see the children on the road on Carnival Saturday and on Carnival Sunday when we pass the last competition, they come auntie, they're crying. <laughs> Why we can't play mass again tomorrow? You know, why today have to be the last day? Because when we get around that bridge on Carnival Sunday, sometimes the announcer has to tell us, okay, Classics Productions, <laughs> all right, and Classics is now leaving the stage, all right, yes, Classics is now leaving the stage, yes, and Classics is leaving the stage, and the children refuse to come off that stage. They have so much fun, you know? And that is what I enjoy. And what we always do every year, we have the same truck. We have had the same DJ, DJ Max, from 2003 up to present. And every year, as we are finished on Carnival Sunday, the truck goes right back up to Belmont. Initially, we started with Clico. Mm -hmm. Clico was our very first, first sponsor. And, um, well, you know what happened with Clico. So then we lost Clico. But recently, we have been getting some sponsorship from the Ministry of Culture and our big sponsor is NLCB. Mm -hmm. They have assisted us. Shamir has done our, um, well, we could probably say care packages because every year Shamir um, gives us our breakfast on a kind of a Saturday morning. She does the breakfast for us and she will come and make sure all the children are fed before we leave. That is Miss Bowles. Mm -hmm. And, um, NLCB. We have also gotten sponsorship in the past from Alberto's Catering. Mm -hmm. He actually is a part of our band. Alberto came to us in about 2004, the year after we started. And from then till he now, <laughs> he has never left. My final year, which was 2015, I played Daughter of the Jade Emperor. And my videos literally went international. Like, they were everywhere. And even though like, that was my favorite year or like my favorite costume or anything, like that feeling of like my videos being everywhere, everybody like recognizing me and like that costume was so epic. It was like a feeling of pride and like it was unexplainable. I couldn't tell anyone how exactly that made me feel because I didn't know how that made me feel. It's been incredible. It's been probably the most amazing thing that happened in my life. And no one ever leaves you. They always make sure you're okay. They're the biggest, most loving family ever. Everybody takes care of you, even though I probably was a brat a lot of the times because I was tired. It was just a great feeling. And I really, really urge the parents of the individuals coming up in the van that once the band can accommodate and it's affordable, please encourage your children to dance, perform, play, and just have the best time of their lives, like crossing the stage and under those lights, or even crossing right across in the middle of the day. It's just, it's just a great feeling and you never lose it. A feeling of excitement and euphoria that comes with leading the bands across those stages. It just it just doesn't go away. Like I'm talking about it now and I'm feeling it. It it was great. It literally cannot be replaced. Nothing I do could feel like that. Cause I I can't play kiddies again, which sucks, honestly. I wish they didn't have an age limit, but they do. So congratulations, Classics, on being the best children's band ever, the best family ever, and my biggest supporters ever. Uh, and one of the things that you really develop as a, as a masquerader with you know, individual portrayals um, is an appreciation for the mask making process. And, and for us each year, that started by, um, by collecting those designs from, from Randall Halfright, who every year was able to tell uh, a different story from start to finish with character arches for all of the characters within the band um, uh, and it also brings you to really recognize the type of hard work the type of engineering the type of uh, expertise that go into the mass making process um, and what it is like in a mass camp night after night day after day um, 
Uh, and, and I remember really having a tremendous appreciation for the materials in terms of, I remember one year we, we, we tried unsuccessfully to, to utilize uh, cane and bamboo um, as the base of the structure in an effort to have a larger costume that was lighter, more fluid, and that would really move on stage. Um, but the, the engineering component just wasn't there. And so we had to scrap that about three quarters of the way in um, and kind of downsize to a, a metal structure that didn't necessarily move as well, but the balance um, of, of the structure would be uh, a lot easier um, for us to work with. Uh, and you know, experiences outside of that, just thinking about all the aunties and uncles in the mass camp, from those who work with quilts to those who work with metals, to copper specialists, to people who are, are, are skilled at just looking at something from a different angle uh, and helping to, to restructure um, uh, and eventually put together what would become the finished product for the bands year in, year out. As I reflect now on you know, some of my favorite portrayals, I recognize also the true genius of, of Randall Harvick, uh, just because, you know, each of those costumes really told a story that meshed both the culture uh, of, our, of our nation, and oftentimes it meshed it with real life issues, tribulations. Um, and the first one that comes to mind, of course, is the Ganges and the Nile, which um, must have been I must have been maybe nine or ten-ish at the time. Uh, and it represented, essentially, as it states in the title, the Ganges River uh, in India meeting with the Nile River in Africa. And of course, there we can see the metaphor for the um, major cultural communities within our nation um, existing harmoniously, as the, as the costume attempted to depict. Um, and then, of course, there's Pan 2010, which at the time would have been maybe 2002, 2003, some, somewhere thereabout, which was um, my first triumph as the National Junior King of Carnival. Um, and it, it, it sought to represent uh, Mr. Harfite's vision for what Pan would look like in the future. And then of course, a few years later, we would indeed have um, an uh, electric um, Pan brought into to our to our nation and culture. And then another one that was just truly amazing um, was uh, confusion of the adolescent mind um, and the structure replicated um, the difficulties uh, that in that period um, we, we tend to face the, the, the almost chaotic balance that was struck within the structure, um, <laughs> or rather within the costume, um, was really uh, something amazing. Uh, and I'm truly thankful uh, and humbled that I was able to, to um, portray those costumes um, so many moons ago, but it has definitely had a lasting impact um, on, on who I am today. Another one of the key members of the Classic Productions team is, of course, Randy Harfide, who is here with us. Randy has been the designer of the band for a number of years, and even though he's left, he certainly left it in good hands. And, mm -hmm. and Randy, tell me about that experience when you all first started and uh, you decided to take the plunge and bring in the band. I mean, uh, think back to that time. What was going through your mind then? Well, Ruskin, if you remember, I first got my first chance at doing... Um, Kiddies Carnival with veteran Richard Bartholomew, mm -hmm. but she took a chance on me because right. his band was small, and I helped Richard build, uh, build his brand and build the band for 22 years, bringing Kiddies Carnival. So we never had a year off right. because Carnival will finish on Ash Wednesday, and Bet Your Life in April, you'll be <laughs> back by him doing Kiddies Carnival right up. And then what we realize is 22 years is a lifetime mm -hmm. for a lot of the kids and parents. So some of them started the Richard and they grew. And all of a sudden we realized we were doing costumes for grandkids, <laughs> which is kind of scary. But <laughs> that's what happened. And then Vanessa came along and Vanessa 
like all good parents, they grow and you have to let them go, mm. right? So for f the first couple of um, years that Vanessa said she's bringing classic productions, I said, let me help you. By that time, Richard was weaning off his band mm -hmm. and I took up the mantle of assisting Vanessa with the hope, and it has blossomed into this, that a lot of young designers and new faces would come on the scene. Mm -hmm. And there we go, it, Vanessa started us. And, and what I liked about her feel is the definite community involvement in Belmont, which mm -hmm. you don't get. Um, I just did a stint at Red Cross promoting a, um, a young designers competition for which TTT is one of the main people. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that these young people don't have anywhere to learn the craft. There's no longer a mass camp right. that mm -hmm. they could go to except for Junior Carnival. Um, so when they talk about going to a mass camp, where do they go to learn? So you have people like Vanessa who actually get the community involved and get everyone to give that really mass cam feel, which you don't get again. But you must be very happy with what you're seeing behind you here and uh, the kind of growth and the, the success that the band has achieved over the years. Well, when you look back at this, this is just a material thing of saying, mm -hmm. yeah, um, we have achieved. Mm -hmm. But I think when you look at the children that play, when you look at the joy that they bring on those two days, especially on the road, mm -hmm. um, those, these prizes and trophies are minor compared to the joy you get, mm -hmm. especially for a designer watching your designs come to life because I could do a million costumes and have them in, in, on a rack. Right. If it wasn't for the young, young bodies and young minds and young masqueraders who are willing to go out there and portray their mask. And Ruskin, I can tell you, that's one thing they do. I, my first encounter with Vanessa is doing um, a costume for one of her sons. And then I watched them and like, mm, I'm not too sure. But putting him in it right. and watching him do, he just looked at it and said, um, can I do this? I said, you do what you want with it. <laughs> and it was a pan in 21st century, something like that. So it was a kind of spaceship pan, pan act thing. And before I know it, he was playing pan on stage. Hmm. And I was like, wow. So with all the masquerade that people don't understand, there can be no costume because a costume on a rack doesn't make sense. Makes sense. How do you come up with the concepts? Inspiration comes from mm. everywhere and everywhere. Mm. Um, we just had my good friend Sean DeFreitas, who is in Miami, he looked at the flower and said, I can create a, a costume because when you look at the flower, you're seeing a skirt, you're seeing two, a, a head, you're seeing two wings. And similarly, um, your inspiration comes from anything. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a Coke bottle, I don't care. It could be anything that inspires you to think. And that's what, as I said, the workshop that just we just did um, is to inspire young designers, not so much telling them how to, how to design, but we want them to think. Mm -hmm. Think what you can do. What we realize, Ruskin, is that a lot of them have the, the mind power and they know exactly all the ideas, but how to transform that from paper right. into person, mm -hmm. that's where the, the, the thing comes mm -hmm. in. So just like Vanessa is encouraging young people to take part, we had that young designers competition to encourage young people to take part and to get involved in carnival, not necessarily from playing, mm -hmm. um, but making costumes. And that is what I like about classic promotions. Mm -hmm. They encourage the community to get involved and get involved in the making of, co of costumes. Too many times we're seeing costumes being imported. If you ask any young people about costumes, they'll tell you, well, I go to this street and right. I collect a pizza box <laughs> and I pay my money. Right. They have not a clue what goes into the making of it. And it's unfortunate that they can't go virtually anywhere to learn that craft because a lot of the parts are being imported now. Mm -hmm. So my heart goes off to classic promotions because they still maintain making it locally. Of course, you have to get stuff from abroad. Right. I mean, the braids mm -hmm. and so on, yes. But the idea is local, how it's put together is local. Not everything would work. Mm -hmm. We have done so many things that were like, oh, oh, it didn't work. But it's the community feel and it's a lovely feeling that this community has created classic promotions. Mm -hmm. All we do is provide leadership, you know. Right. 
the leadership, either in design or in, band, um, in, like in Vanessa's case, a band leader. But that's all we provide. The rest is the community and all our friends. I mean, I'm sure Vanessa would lose a couple of friends by Ash Wednesday <laughs> <laughs> because they all want to sleep and she's like, you know. But that's what it is. That's what it is. It's the whole community feel. Okay. What is the direction that you are seeing and what would you like to see? Uh, especially as it, it, it starts with the Kiddies Carnival. Well, Ruskin, as I said, um, I had a couple of things on my bucket list. And I, I also have people a bucket list is a serious thing. <laughs> Knowledge is something you must never keep. Mm. If you keep, it's a waste of time, a waste of your brain. So if I have any opportunity to pass on that knowledge, I, I welcome that opportunity. And people must understand, I watch so many young designers come to, and they, they just have nowhere to go. So I see it as my role is to pass it on. Um, I have been lucky that I have the avenues of classic promotion, had the avenues of classic mm -hmm. promotion. And just like Vanessa, um, I understand she's now at UE teaching textiles and so on. So you know what? That knowledge, I am sure, is going to be passed on, and that is my goal. This is wonderful, and a wonderful backdrop of trophies is testimony to the, not only of her hard work, but the hard work of many people that people don't see. Mm. You come here and you collect your costumes. What you don't see is the 2 o'clock in the morning that people are cutting, mm -hmm. and the whole community getting involved. You don't see that, and it's to their credit that all of this can be put on the table right now. So and that is, in fact, folks, the story of so classic yeah, productions uh, are really a, an so examination of excellence over the years and may it long continue into the future. Who ready? We now start. Get ready, D. Set up on start. Me three on the way. We lining up. Ready to charge ahead. For what is not enough, I want you to jump up. Trouble the ground now. We headed to downtown. Get all on the rail. Touch